Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 3, Biological Diversity. This is video number 4 and we're going to focus on the prickly pear. What we need to do in this particular video is um, similar to the previous one we looked at with cane toads to be able to explain observed changes in a population of organisms on the basis of selection pressures over time using the example of prickly pear in Australia. So this is the prickly pear. It is like the cane toad an introduced species. Uh, however, it has a slightly longer history in Australia. Um, it was brought uh, around about the time of the first fleet. Uh, I think partly uh, to help make some of the people on uh, those trips feel a little more at home. They brought a number of um, species, plant and animal with them, um, some deliberately, some inadvertently, um, to help uh, make the transition to uh, the new land uh, a slightly easier one for them. And of course, some of the organisms that they brought uh, did very well in this um, country, in this climate, and, uh, and they spread their distribution and abundance uh, increased greatly. And that was the case for the prickly pear. It is a, an introduced species that found the um, conditions here very much to its liking. And so its uh, distribution expanded uh, greatly over the subsequent years. In fact, so great was the distribution um, uh, and increasing abundance of the prickly pear that it started to become a problem. Um, just the same way that the beetles had attacked the cane crops, so this particular um, species took off around the country and so we had to try and find ways to combat it. As with the cane toad, um, the prickly pear was a problem uh, associated with dispersal, was unable to reach Australia and uh, so therefore we now know it would have grown perfectly in this country but just uh, wasn't able to reach it until it was brought into the country. Likewise, not just the uh, species itself but the solution was also brought into the country. So this particular moth, this particular species of moth called Cactoblastus Was brought, in, was brought in specifically because the, um, the grubs or the caterpillars of this particular moth feed on the prickly pear. Just as we did with the cane toad, we need to look at some of the potential selection pressures that made this particular species an initial success, but also therefore led to um, a decrease in its abundance and distribution with the advent of a specific biological control agent. So unlike the cane toad, the prickly pear is a plant, it's a producer. So therefore its competition is going to be, um, generally speaking, other producers that might be competing for light, for water, for space, um, for gases or other nutrients in the soil. And so how well this particular species was able to compete, which is obviously pretty well, um, allowed it to thrive and uh, increase its distribution. Not long after that, of course, we realised that we needed to do something about the numbers. And so the um, moth that we introduced to feed specifically on this um, species was able to uh, get those numbers back under control. And this is actually a successful example of biological control. And once again, I haven't gone into this in a huge amount of detail, partly because it's, it's time consuming when you're looking at videos, but also because I want you to do this as a short case study. And hopefully this will be a preparation and show you the key steps that you need to follow for your cane toad um, uh, topic, for your cane toad assessment. So I think um, one, of the, one of these little ones you might have seen, these little tools that I've used on previous videos, is a case. And a case is a nice little acronym to help us remember the key things that we need to do or the steps that we follow when we're undertaking a case study. So in this case, the area of interest is obviously going to be the prickly pear. And we're looking at changes in its distribution and also its abundance. 
And so you're going to find increases as well as decreases for this particular species. You want to conduct your research, so obviously we want to know what happened and why it happened. So they're the, they're the two areas of research that we're looking for. What happened to this particular species? Um, why were its numbers um, increasing initially? And then what happened when we introduced the biological control agent, the Cactoblastis moth? When you're doing your research, it's important that you consider a number of important keywords, and I'll add one more into this, reliability. This is about secondary sources. This is not about you doing an experiment on your own and, and gathering first-hand data. This is secondary source data. So this data that you're going to look up from work that other people have done. So it's very important that you uh, keep relevance on the top of your mind. Is this actually helping me answer the question I'm after? Uh, is it valid? Is it reliable? Who wrote it? When was it written? Why was it written? Um, if I'm looking at dates or numbers, other quantitative data, are there ways I can establish um, how valid, how correct that data is? And often I can do that by looking at multiple sources and seeing if the, um, the substantial facts are in agreement across those different sources. Now, once you've got all of that material, you then need to summarize. So you need to start to pull that back into the format of your presentation. In the case of the cane toads, it's going to be a poster. In this case, just a short report, just to give you a little bit of an idea of how to prepare this. And I will get you to, to do that for me um, this week. And then embody your findings into the overarching concept. So the overarching concept uh, is two things in this case. Firstly, the prickly pear is this particular species that we're we're interested in. So what we're most interested in is selecting pressures and how they change populations over time and relate that specifically to um, the distribution and abundance of the prickly pear. So that's your task. Let's get to it. Thanks for watching.